Hello and welcome to an Adobe Illustrator CS3 lesson I call Name Design. Before we start, we want to start a new document. Uh, so we're going to either hit Print Document right here, or you can go File, New, and we'll call it Name Design. And it's going to be a regular letter size, except we don't want it portrait. We're going to do the orientation to Landscape. And you say OK. Now, if you didn't get that, and you started it and you forgot to do that, you can just go File, Document Setup, and then change it to Landscape. Then we're going to make sure we've got our grid showing. So we go View, Show Grid. And we want to make sure our Smart Guides are turned off. And mine are already turned off because I used it earlier. So there you have it. I am going to just uh, try and keep the number of letters small to make this lesson a little bit quicker. Um, I am going to use the pen tool and we're just going to draw with straight lines for the most part and I'm just going to use verb because my last name is Verbeek so I'm just going to go like this so all I'm going to do is click move the mouse click move now you must use the pen tool for this assignment do not use the lines because if you just put a bunch of line tools together you won't be able to fill it or change it. Now when you go from letter to letter you'll just hit the black arrow tool for a sec click away start on a new pen. So now I'm going to do an E. So click move so you gotta kinda plan this out in your head of what it's gonna look like. And black hair tool, click away, back on the pen tool, and I'm just going to start my R. And I'll show you a little more in a moment on what we can do with regards to filling in our holes. So I'm just going to make my B a little bit weird just to uh, give it kind of a cool shape where everything fits together. And you can see I'm a little too close here, but I'll fi I can fix that later. So now I'm going to grab a pen. I'm going to grab the inside of the R. I'm going to draw it. So click And then I'll click away, grab the pen tool again. And again, click away with the black arrow tool. And then I grab my black arrow tool. And I'm going to start on the outside and drag over the two pieces of the R, making sure that I don't hit any of the other pieces. So again, watch, I just clicked and drag nice thin line over both pieces. And I'm going to go on the menu bar and go Object, Compound Path, and Make. And you'll notice that puts a hole in it. Now you can't do that with three things at once. So we've got to do it here, and grab those two pieces, Object, Compound Path, Make, and these two pieces, object, compound path, and make. Then we want to make sure that we can learn how to adjust things a little bit. So I'm going to take these two points, and now you can see that I've selected just points because these ones are filled with blue, whereas the rest are filled with white. So the blue ones are selected. And up here on the properties panel, I can I've got these convert. Things. So I'm just going to click on this convert anchor points to smooth and I'm going to do that and I'm going to click on that one and convert to smooth and then I'm going to take my white arrow tool and I'm going to grab not that point but that point on the E and I'm going to use my arrow key just to move that back a little. I'm going to try and keep the spacing similar because I think it'll look so that looks pretty good there. 
move that one back just a little. Move this one over to the right one. Move that one back. Maybe one more. I'll move that one back. Now, I'm feeling pretty good about this. So now I'm going to look at these two and you can see they're a little higher than the other two. So I'm probably just gonna squish them down a little. And that's looking a little closer again. And maybe this one even a touch more. Although when I do that, I could take this point and this point if I hold the shift key and this point and move those down just until I get to the right spot. Now, it says H verb or just verb. And I'm going to now grab these and I'm going to put a brush on it. Now, there's all kinds of brushes you can add and he, underneath here there's more brushes. So you can use decorative brushes, uh, scatter brushes, default brushes, uh, borders, dashed frames, geometry. So there's so many. I'm going to go to artistic though, and I'm going to use charcoal pencil because I want to kind of a, have a hand drawn look. And I don't know, I'll try that one. Seems a bit much for me. I might just go with the kind of default one here. It's a thin charcoal pencil here. I'm going to try that one. Now, over here, you will notice that there are two different colors. There's white for the fill and black for the stroke. To change those, they have to be up front. So if I want to change the stroke right now, I'll take the black arrow tool. They all have to be selected. And if I want to change the stroke to blue, you'll notice though this is on the forefront. If I want to change the fill to yellow, then I can do that. And you can do each letter separately, so on and so forth. But I won't do that just to keep things a little bit quicker. Then, because I've got them all in a position I want them, I'm just going to go Control G, which stands for group. Control G and Control C for copy and Control V for paste. Now I've got two of them. And I'm going to make this one black. And I'm going to make its stroke also black. And then I'm going to right click on it, arrange, and send to back. And then I'm going to move it just slightly off, slightly to the right and slightly lower than the other one. So now it's kind of got a bit of a 3D look, looks, jumps out at you way more. So then I'm going to drag over both and I'm going to group them. Control G. And you'll notice when I grab them, they move together. Then I'm going to go Control C and Control V again, and I'm going to grab the top handle here and drag it down. So I'm going to make a little shadow of it, except I'm going to make it smaller. And shadow probably should not be fully opaque, so I'm going to change the opacity down so it just looks like a little bit of a shadow. Then I'm going to grab those two. And I'm going to go Control G to group it. Maybe I'll then make it a little bit bigger. Then I'm going to grab a pen tool. I just switched it to the default white and black. And I'm going to grab a pen tool. And I'm going to start drawing around it. So I'm just clicking, moving, clicking. And to move it to the back, I go right click, arrange, send to back. Then I can leave it as white if I want to. Too. And I can change my stroke. I can make it a brush again if I want, which that looks kind of cool. I can change the width of the brush. 
to it's one point right now so maybe I'll go with a 0.5 or even a 0.25 and then I can decide if I want to change the stroke color maybe the stroke color I'll go with that same blue so I'll try that for stroke although it did nothing because I wasn't selected on it then I'm going to take this and I'm going to go control C and control V and I'm going to go right click arrange send to back and So now this doesn't fit perfectly. So again, the real easy thing is grab the white arrow tool. Um, you know, select, so you click on it, and sometimes you have to click it twice. And you just move all these points over if you want. And again, you don't have to do exactly what I'm doing here. But this is just an example. What a finish! I'm trying to give you an example of what a finished product will look like. And again, you can go on the website um, and look at Illustrator examples, and you'll be able to see what a, a really good one looks like. Now, the other thing that might look cool is if, for my fill color. And here's an interesting thing. You can choose an eyedropper and pick the color you want there. So there I filled it. And now the stroke is way too big. So I'll go back to 0.25 again. And so that's looking pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. And now I'm going to go Control G to group it all because I'm happy with it and then I'm going to add some symbols. Now there's not many symbols here, but what you can do is you can go through here on the bottom there's a bunch of other symbol swatches. So I can just go to primitive and for example I can add whatever I feel like adding. I just want you to know how to get symbols so it's going to be part of the assignment is to add some symbols. Now these obviously don't make a lot of sense for me but there are much more a lot more assignments out here that you can look from. I won't get that. I'm going to look for retro. There you go. And I'll probably try this little guitar here. And a neat thing about this is you can actually break the link to the symbol. And then I can go Control Shift G and you'll start to notice that you can take things that you want out of it. And I'm just going to get rid of that and I'm going to keep that guitar because I love to play guitar even though I'm terrible. And there you have it. I just copied and pasted, control C and control V.
and view fit in window is a good way to get everything back in place where you wanted it and I can take this and I can fit it in the middle and there you have it didn't obviously spend a lot of time on it um, but this is fairly close to a finished product you can also do some really cool things I'm just gonna grab these symbols and move them out of the way for this particular thing and show you some warp tools now if you're happy with this that's fine but underneath here this is a warp tool and the warp tool can be changed I'll show you how in a moment the reason that wasn't working is because I had the symbol selected see how I did that I just grab it with a warp tool and does that I don't use the warp tool very often I use the one underneath it because there's the twirl tool and there's also the crystallize tool and anytime you make a mistake control Z is edit undo so that twirl tool looks pretty cool in the corner maybe I'll go back to a twirl tool and do that one down there and you'll notice that again if you don't like it just go control Z if you like it again I could just go control shift Z which will bring it back um, and you can try all those different types of twirl tools and there you have a finished product of the name design you've learned how to put symbols on you've learned how to arrange things to the front and to the back You've learned how to change opacity. You've learned how to do a compound path to insert holes. And you've learned how to use a warp tool. You've also learned how to change the stroke and fill and the brushes. Thanks for watching.